Good morning, everyone. So I'm gonna be doing a series of videos. I know, Hot Mess Express at your service. Um, I'm gonna be doing a series of videos on congenital issues. Um, it's beautiful outside. I'm just waking up, just getting my coffee. I just did an hour long video and I, I started off with umbilical hernias, calling it hydrocephalus. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I'm gonna re-record all of these. I'm gonna do individual stuff. Um, <laughs> It was, it's been a long couple of weeks, so I'm really tired and trying to get my life together. <laughs> I don't know that my life will ever be together. I've been saying that for like three years, but anyways, um, starting with umbilical hernias. Yes, they are genetic. Um, does that mean you shouldn't breed your dog? No. Um, if the dog is an otherwise great candidate for breeding, um, you shouldn't rule that out. However, if, if you have a stud dog that has a hernia or a fixed hernia, you need to make your clients aware of this issue. If you have um, a female that's had a hernia or a fixed hernia, again, let your clients know, your puppy parents know. Um, uh, there's a debate on whether or not you should um, allow your dog to breed if they've had a hernia, especially in the females, um, because you know, some people say if they have a hernia while they're pregnant, it's the hole's gonna get bigger and it's gonna pop out more. I don't know. I don't know if it's true. It's a huge debate. Um, right now, AKC does allow dogs who have had hernias to compete. Um, most of the time, hernias aren't a problem. Um, they're more cosmetic, but there are some times where they are an issue. Um, if, if it's too big, um, if they... Um, <clears throat> adhere to the cell wall or you know that tissue gets cut off then it, that tissue is going to die and it's going to cause infection so those are the times where you need to have that fixed like right away but most of the times you can get it fixed at spay or neuter um what is an umbilical hernia it's an outward bulging of the abdominal lining um abdominal fat or portion of the abdominal organs in around the belly button um so before birth, the umbilical blood vessels pass through an umbilical ring. It's an opening in the abdominal muscles to provide nourishment to the developing puppies. Um, once they're born, that, um, that ring closes. But with a hernia, um, it's an incomplete closure of the ring after birth. Um, it generally appears and is identified soon after birth as a soft swelling beneath the skin and uh, it's protruding. You can really see it when the puppy is standing, straining, like if you cradle a puppy and they don't like it and they're like, eh, it'll pop out. Um, <sighs> there are two types of hernias. Um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, reducible and non-reducible. Um, reducible means that the protrusion can be pushed back in. I mean, obviously it's gonna come back out, but non-reducible is when you try to push it in and it doesn't go in. That means that those tissues are um, adhered to the abdominal lining. Um, sizes vary. They can be smaller than your pinky or ginormous. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Like I said, most are not dangerous. Um, pose no health threats. It's just ugly to look at and weird to feel. Um, oh, it's not recommended to correct the umbilical hernia in puppies less than six months of age because there's a potential for delayed closure. So, um, like I said, most um, hernias are hereditary. Some trauma is a legitimate cause. Like if you clamp or, or sever the umbilical blood vessels too close, closely to the body wall, um, or mom is cleaning a little too rough, it can tug at that, that umbilical cord before it's done healing and, and cause some uh, hernias. And then back up to the, is it safe to breed females, which we've already covered. So um, that's it for umbilical hernias. I'm gonna start working on the other videos and uh, I'll post it soon.